Can I get attention, please? My name is Marty Aikens. I'm the chairman. Yes. Vice chairman's not here tonight. Uh, the board members, Mr. Franco, Mr. Barry, Mr. O'Brien, Mrs. Uh, Clark, Mrs. Griffin, Mr. Parliament, Commissioner Director, behind me. If you have a cell phone, could you please put it on silent or vibrate, not to interrupt the meeting. If you want to speak, please step outside. Uh, anyone going to speak tonight, please stand and raise your right hand. Take an oath. Mr. Franco, please. Let me swear, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter that you're testifying. Yes, I do. Thank you. You don't have to. You're lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> Double with that going down all right sure. first on the agenda gba 2390 patrick foley esquire for variance findings to replace the existing auto body shop with a nine unit condominium building one commercial unit and 23 parking spaces on premise number 10 independence f and there's a letter here so they want a motion to withdraw without prejudice Can I have the motion please on CBA 2390 Patrick Foley Esquire for vision and finding to replace the existing auto body shop with nine unit condo building and one commercial unit with 23 parking spaces on the premises number 10 independence Avenue in Quincy hereby moves to withdraw without prejudice. Second. On the motion, stand on all in favor. All right. All right. Opposed? So moved. Now anyone going forward tonight, there's only four of us on the board. So if you want a variance, you can't lose one of us. You have to get all four of us to be on your side. Uh, or you can come back and there'll be a fifth person the next time you come. We'll make sure there's five people. Someone's in the hospital and someone's overseas, so we're missing a few people. Sick. And someone's sick, right. So let's start with uh, 70, 78 Bellevue. Yep. You want to go forward? My, to go my only question is um, when we were here two weeks ago, Riddell, Mr. Riddell and Mr. Chen were here. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if Mullen will apply to Ms. Frankel. I've, I've he's, viewed the tapes. You have, okay. He's viewed the tapes, every one of them twice, he said. We will move forward tonight. Okay, okay. okay. thank you. You're welcome. 87 Dorchester Street. We'll go forward. Forward. And uh, 19 Agawam Road. Go forward. Go forward, okay. Let's go back to ZBA 2436. Equate to for a variance to widen the driveway and create a cupola on the premises 78 Bellevue Road. We were here before. Uh, no one was in favor. No one was in favor. The cupola that we talked about the driveway. Now we understand that there was a permit given to you for two four foot walkways and a 28 foot wide driveway. 20? 20? 20 was a walkway. 28 total, 24 and, oh, okay. Uh, so we have we have a lot of things going on down there. We have a fine because someone cut down a tree. You say that someone from the city did it, correct? Correct. And you have a letter to that? Uh, that? I have an email from the tree warden. Uh, he was retracting his letter that he submitted to this board, which which held the homeowner responsible for the removal of that tree. When that, did that you was, get that? That was not done, uh, we, uh, today. It's I was, I was communicating, okay, he said he was submitting stuff and was going to advise the, uh, the zoning board uh, in that respect. Right. So what they're doing is they're just investigating, correct? This is based on the investigation as far as they're comfortable tracking the letter, I'm requesting my own one. But uh, if our continued investigation reveals other facts, we may bring this back to other well, channels. Okay. If I may uh, say something. Let's say, let's say that issue is gone, the tree issue. What about the paving issue? Why did he pave that whole thing? Uh, so, I mean, he had uh, um I'm not going to point out a contract or anything, but he had a contract that did paving work. Um, it just came to me today that, you know, based, I, I requested the paving permit today 
and, and had received it. I just received it from Kathleen uh, this evening. Uh, so I'm just becoming aware of that. What was paved was not what was permitted. Um, I have requested relief from this board tonight um, for just that as well, though. Uh, the, the paving of a of, of certain um, percentage of that front setback. Uh, the walkways, in my understanding, the walk waivers uh, will be, they weren't completed yet. Those are, pa those are pavers. Those aren't paved with asphalt. So I, I don't think that's included in the in the, the percentage. Um, but the request tonight was obviously the paving of, of, of beyond that 30% of the front setback mm -hmm. on, on one street, Bellevue, in this case, um, and a, a request to um, to extend the curb cut. It was from 22, it, it was today, to, to 32. So it's 32 foot wide, he paved it. When it's supposed to be 20 yeah. in two four foot walkway. I thought it was 28 by 28, was it? 20 feet driveway and 24 But you have a permit to do that. Why wasn't it done like that? I, I can't answer that question. Oh, I don't right. I don't I don't Those know. Are my questions. However, I am requesting the the, I know the, the required relief tonight, uh, with respect to that. I asked for an answer and you don't have it. So me, go back to the 20 plus the two four four walk, which I'll be voting no on it myself. But Questions? Any questions? Can I get clarification? Mr. Frank. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. The tree. There's a letter there from from the tree warden. We should be tracking it now. We still investigate. If you find something, you'll bring in two other trees. If I may um, speak on the tree, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so here, here's here's what happened. Um, my client, after he had done his addition, or even before that, um, that particular sidewalk in front of his home, and we see it in other sections of the city as well. I know the mayor is working hard to, you know, concrete sidewalk, every single sidewalk, uh, potentially in the city of Quincy. This particular sidewalk, because of the high root system in that particular tree, completely disrupted that entire sidewalk. Somebody felt injured. My client noticed it because it's right in front of his home. There was a group from the parks department that was working on a, uh, a uh, some doing some landscaping on one of the islands. He went over there, visited them, said, can you take a look at this 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 walkway over the island yeah oh yeah it went over the island grabbed one of the guys there came over one of those guys looked at the sidewalk and said absolutely this should be removed because mm -hmm. of the high root system for this particular tree um i advised tree warden after this hearing two two weeks ago of that i did finally get a response from him um and it was just what he said you know uh he i wasn't able to talk to him it was more just email communication back and forth i said i do need something to clarify the removal of the tree for the zoning, mm -hmm. you know, because they were questioning it um, a couple of weeks ago. So can you please provide something? That's what he's provided. Okay. But that's what happened. And I get you know, it. My client had n nothing to do with the removal of the tree. But here's what I say. You've got a permit to put the 20 foot wide driveway with two four, well, two four foot walkway and he didn't do it. I mean, you know, you just think you can do it and ask for, ask for and I, and I know a lot I'm not going to, I'm not going to belabor this, but it's important for me as counsel like for the applicant. Do you like to be interrupted? I don't either. And I never got to I, I apologize. Go I apologize. Go ahead. No, go ahead. It's important <laughs> counsel for any applicant that we received all communication regarding this matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. This, the, the past hearing two weeks ago, I did not receive the letter from the tree warden until I got here that evening. Okay. I did not receive this, these permits either until I got here this evening. So that's not your fair to us, for us to be able to respond. Terms. Your client has those permits. You can go and get those. That judge will have as a lawyer to go get those permits. I wasn't questioning the permit again. Well, I wasn't questioning the permit. You didn't get the permits. Till, till this evening that's from, from this board. Yeah, your job I, is to get the permits. I think it's important that we receive all correspondence that are filed with this particular, for any particular matter. You know, prior to the hearing, you know, I have a job to do for my client as well, and it's important that I receive all yeah, communication. Yeah. But your client you know? had a job to do too: is put in a twenty-foot driveway with two four-foot walkways, and he didn't. Somebody paid before him. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure he knew exactly what was supposed to be paid. People don't go in and pay the yacht. They just don't do that unless they're told what to do. Okay. I guess I'm done. But regardless of that, I, I the request, the request, you know, requested tonight was for the paving of that entire area. You know, so we're trying to resolve that particular matter as well. All right. 
Yeah, that's the, why the, the, this relief was requested. The clerk said she just mailed, emailed you and asked you about the permits and you never got back to her. I don't think so who, I, who do I, I don't think I received that communication. Huh? Um, is there a reply from him? Okay. So in regards to um, this is the email that I sent on the 10th. Good afternoon. I wanted to touch base with you regarding the permits for this property were requested by Chairman Akins. Will you be researching them and bringing the printed copies with you to the June 18th ZBA meeting? On June 17th, I received a, re a reply to this email stating, Kathleen, I did not see Stephen Quieto on tomorrow's ZBA agenda. There was a revised agenda that apparently didn't get uploaded. I apologize. My client has advised me that he spoke with the tree warden who has confirmed that it was the city who removed the tree and he will be providing the board with a letter. Mm -hmm. Do you have that letter so it can be made part of the record? If he gave me one. Please let me know if you have received anything. He sent so me, he said, I, I just received an email tonight. So. so I sent this email in regards to whether you would be researching the permits and bringing them to Chairman Aikens or would I and the reply I got was in regards to the tree. So there was no conversation about the permits, okay. although I addressed it. Okay. My apologies. Uh, but again, uh, the relief I'm requesting tonight covered co covered all of that as well. Um, that particular area that was, was indeed paved. Was it rightfully paved? Maybe, well, maybe it was. You know, but I still requested the relief tonight for that area to be paved. Let's see if so, we, we have yeah. it here. We have a okay. request for, for your request. Okay. Personally, I think if you did it the right way first but didn't do it and ask for it, it'd be a completely different story. But for people what? to go pave stuff and change what was done in a permit, I have a problem with that. Would you object if my client was agreeable to the to the twenty foot um, driveway coming in off Bellevue, um, but kind of fishtailed out uh, to be able to access those garages? You know, so you have you have more grass landscaping. Uh, I think he's just trying to provide access to, no, the, to I, the three power garage. I know, you know, and I get, I get, you know? I get. You know? So he would be amenable to that to have it centered on the middle garage off of Bellevue, and just kind of fish deal out a little bit so you can access each garage. So we will keep it to the twenty. You're fine with that. I don't know. We get, we get three other people here to speak. That's sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, does um, your client intend to deal with that sidewalk? Yeah, certainly the curb cutting is all on him to do. Even run new curbing as installation of new, um, probably uh, granite curbing. I, I'm assuming, right? Um, and it's probably you know the con. I don't know if it's concrete down there or is it just asphalt. I mean, I'm just I'm wondering. I mean, I'm guessing that some of that sidewalk's gonna get messed up. That that stump. I mean, I don't care if it's stump. With the installation of the curbing. The, no, yeah. The, the roots are. are that it's got to weigh down. It, it has to, yeah. Yeah, because otherwise you're going to lose the bottom of your car. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Right. Yeah, so that will have to be addressed as well. Any questions? How many parking spaces are you looking to achieve? You have three garage spaces. There's currently enough swing space to get in and out of the facing the house, the left side. How many parking spaces on the exterior are you looking to achieve through this project? I know maybe one more space, but I'm more concerned on the safety of backing in and out of the drive out of the driveway. It's a bus route. There's a couple of big trees, you know, blind spots. So I'm more concerned on the safety than anything. You you currently have enough room for a car to back out and flip around, so they're coming head forward. <laughs> no, not really. You got to maneuver, it, you know. Driving over the sidewalk, yeah, sure. You don't have to drive over the sidewalk. You you have you have plenty of room to flip a car around if you're not trying to park three in the garage plus three more cars. Yeah, I'm not looking to do that. So my question is, how many exterior are you looking to park any cars on the outside? Well, I own five vehicles, so. Do you live there? Yes. Where are the five cars? No, there's been no cars in the driveway. I have two that I'm loaned out to some friends that need it. And I also have a second home, summer home in Marshfield, and that's where uh, two of my other cars are right now. 
So there's currently no cars that have been parked in the in the driveway at all, and you have two. Yeah. Is that a tenant in the lower level parking on the street? I don't have a tenant there. A friend of mine was staying there. I told him to. So you're not. You, what I'm saying is, and it, you you have plenty of you you have asphalt space that is going unused, and you're parking cars on the street. On the side street, yeah, I, I guess. What okay. is that? I'm not allowed to park on that street. I don't know. I'm just trying to understand how many cars you're trying to achieve parking for. Well, I think if we design a driveway with a 20 foot onto Bellevue uh, and kind of fishtail into the garages, I think there's going to be very little room to park vehicles outside of the garage. Maybe one in the middle. That's about it. How wide is the current curb cut? Uh, 22. No. No, it's not at all. 16. Oh, 16. Okay. 16 or 14 or 16. No, there's something. So you're talking about reconfiguring it to put 20 in the middle? Yeah, bring it right to the center, basically. How about up. giving back some of the asphalt that was paved without permit? Uh, yeah, we would we would rip that out because uh, we wouldn't we I wouldn't think have we need to see a design. We'd have to see a new site plan with the 20 feet and what asphalt you're going to give back because you overpaved what you were allotted. Yeah, we'll so I'm not that. willing to approve it without seeing a site plan. No, it's probably a good idea because we that's made, more in if we, line with what was approved for total asphalt area okay. and a 20 foot wide drive. Okay, and removing what we intend to remove, we may not need relief at all. But that's yeah. so we'll see. Okay. I mean, well, yeah, I just don't understand. The, the tree one is still investigating, so that. No, 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 no. He he said. He's pretty he, sure. He's pretty sure someone took that out. Probably from sure. the state. I never told him they won on the city side. On the city side. So someone so that's that resolved us. So that we're left with the driveway open. They think it's resolved, but they're still looking at it. They want to make sure they get the right answers and who did it and why. So it's inconclusive. Sort of, but the tree board says it's not his fault. Okay. So we're gonna find out, I don't know, maybe you got bias. I don't know what you're gonna do, but I don't understand how you what you you build three drop three uh -huh. Driveways, and you only have a driveway for two, which the 20 feet will get to the two, right? The I two. think what he applied for was probably going to um, be enough to access all three, but very difficult. And that's why we're here today, to make it a little bit easier to navigate the driveway to access all three garages. What I'm saying is that for what it designed it. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to see more, basically. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're going to definitely need a plan. How it's going to be planned. How it's going to not be. What's the bigger move? Okay. Okay. Right. The walkways have to be installed. Right. right. Well, yeah, they'll be installed on the plan. Right. Right. And then, then we can look at it again. We, we can we can do that relatively quickly, I think. Can we do that in two weeks? Yeah. And get this done? All right. Uh, July 23rd, excuse me, July 9th. July 9th. July 9th. Very good. A motion to continue to July 9th, and then we even have probably more answers from five people. On case GPA 24-36, Steve P. Kieto for variance to widen the driveway and direct the Google on the premises number 78 Bellevue Road, Quincy, Mass. Move that the matter be continued to July 9th. Second. Kind of motion, saying that all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. So Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to find the side of us. Cooper has been removed. Cooper has gone. Well, it's still in there. It's still on. Continued and continued to okay. case, but at the final thing, I don't think no one wants to. Right. Thank you. And uh, oh, one other thing comes in. They were supposed to take out the uh, sink, sink upstairs. Yeah, that wasn't part of my application. Um, but what, that was on the permit. He says, I'm not even going to inspect it until you take the sink out. This is a sink where? Well, off the garage, I, I understand. Yep, it's a fast sink. Not really a zoning issue, I don't think, right? Yeah, it is. It's a zoning issue? What's yeah. the zoning issue? Yeah, why? He told him to take it out. I asked if he took it out. The house isn't finished. Did you take it out? There's no sink. There's no sink. It was never installed. Never installed. Just the pipes? Yes. Okay. But were the pipes taken out? Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's what I want. Okay. Just see if you follow what we're, what we're asking you to do. Thank you. Thank you.
further on tonight's agenda. Can we, where am I, 24-4. Daniel Reggiani, Reggiani, there you go, for variance to correct the small patio and a 10 by 16 shed. Now you already have the shed there, is that correct? The shed is already there, the patio is already there. Name and address for record, please. Uh, 19 Agawam Road. Why don't you tell us what happened where you Okay, uh, I removed an existing patio and a flower bed that was about about three feet high. Mm -hmm. uh, put a new patio in, about the same size. Mm -hmm. Had a new shed delivered. Mm -hmm. Shed is too close to the fence. Mm -hmm. um, I was away when the shed came, but I probably moved it a little further, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, trying to maximize space, as you know, the backyard's here. You know, it's a yeah. 5,000 square foot lot. Mm -hmm. um, I got three huge trees in the back that take up probably you know, maybe a third of my backyard, mm -hmm. put a patio in, and now I'm stuck with you know, pretty small backyard. I have a little uh, deck out back, mm -hmm. so I probably have right now you know, maybe a length of my yard and a 10 feet wide mm -hmm. uh, grass. You keep your house very nice. I do. I was, I was, I was impressed when I was Yes, we've there. probably we've done the whole entire thing over top to bottom. lights warm today. The cars in the driveway and nobody answered the door. The ring doorbell was not installed correctly. Oh. So ring it again. And my wife works from home, so she probably could answer. Me, I go, no, they're looking at me. Someone's looking at me. Please <laughs> show the bed. They don't want to answer. <laughs> they just want to answer. Yeah, we're quite better with stone or something. There was a lot of that. But uh, I went around the side and I saw where they put it. I mean, I, and I get it. That's where you put a shed. That's where you really the guy that built shed to put a shed. So you're looking to get what? A foot over there, a foot, 18 inches? Can you yeah. put something so you can get behind it and paint it and do what you got to do? Uh, yeah, I can move it. Right. Um, I'd rather keep it where it is so no, I don't have to pay the $500 to move you it. Really but... want to get, it's hard to walk, walk through it. Yes. I mean, yes. you know, when you're going to paint it someday, you're going to do something. You yes. should have 18 inches to get back in, get a roller in there or something. But... And I know it's, and that's what I'm just trying to look at. Okay. So you can get to work on it. Any questions? Uh, you got yeah, I have questions. Yeah. Quite quiet now. Actually, you can have a seat. Does anyone want to speak in favor? Yes. Speak in favor. First, second call. Third call. Call out how they can uh, I got a letter here from the DPW. We have reviewed the above reference case. Have no comments. Anyone opposed or undecided, please step forward. Can we jump in with this? Yes, opposed or undecided. Uh, yeah. Come on up, name and address for the record, please. <laughs> Let's see. So I'm Bob Caleri, my wife Elaine. We live at 25 Agawam, adjacent to the Janini property. Okay. Uh, the the patio and shed when they were built we were actually unaware that this was being done mm -hmm. uh, if we had then we probably would have had some input into the location mm -hmm. but it is in fact within say like five inches that's pretty cool on our fence right. and we'd actually like to have more space mm -hmm. i mean it's supposed to be a five foot mm -hmm. six feet six feet according to code enforcement mm -hmm. so i mean we're we just like to have it farther away from our fence that's a reasonable amount yeah. i mean six feet might be considering the size of this yard you know might be a little too much but still uh, if we because the fence is really static <laughs> if somebody's going to come along they're not going to have a lot of room to do it right. and uh, you know basically we just think that we'd like to have the thing moved farther away from our our property which is okay. exactly what we think it should be okay Thank you for your time. When it was it was put up just about in July of last year, and when I noticed how close it was, I called the city to see if there was a restriction or whatever there was for close to the property. And the building department told me that there was a five a six foot setback from a, a building. So he came out and looked at it. it was a uh, uh, Paul Martin that I spoke with and he came out and looked at the thing 
and he told me it was, and he said he would send him a, a notice on it. You're touching me. I'm sorry, that's me doing that, I'm sorry. He sent him a, a notice telling him on it, mm -hmm. and there was no response from the owner at all, and he sent him a violation, a first one of $100, mm -hmm. and then there was no response, and he sent him a certified letter with another notice of $300 fine, mm -hmm. and he had no response from it, and he also had spoken to the commissioner on this also, mm -hmm. and it then yeah, they told me to call the, co the, the commissioner. Uh, I thought I had. I know I've got his name down here. Yeah. Okay. Who's Mister? I just wanted, I didn't know who was who was uh, Paul Martin spoke to the commissioner. His his boss. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. And he told him, you know, to go ahead with the proper things the way that he was following through on it. So uh, they told me to call the uh, constituent service office and she referred it to the uh, legal department. And the, the fellow in the legal department that got back to me on it, when it, she sent him all the paperwork that I had sent, she sent it to him with all the details on it, mm -hmm. was a, Mi uh, a Michael Weber. And he had said that he had, you know, called the owner also on it mm -hmm. and that he wanted to do what was right. And he said if he had to, he would move it. It's not that we object to the shed at all. Right. It's that, and I have pictures to show you no, I, I on it, I that it's know. within well, five inches of, yeah. of the fence. Yeah. That's the only thing. Yeah. I, you know, on this whole thing. And he hadn't responded to any correspondence to any of the other departments at all with it on the fines or anything. And I just don't think that that's uh, a proper way to be doing things, living in there, and especially being a city employee. There's I don't a think. microphone right there. I know it's hard. Hmm? Microphone right there every time you touch it, it bangs. No, no, no. The microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you. So I'm sorry. It goes like I'm that. sorry. Okay. No, yeah. thank you. Thank you for coming. Back. We appreciate it. Okay. And thank you for the information. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else? Opposed to undecided? Second call? Third call? Call a part of you in close. Can I, can I speak to you, please, for a minute? Come up. So, come up. Please? Yes. Yeah. How'd we get here? She just said you got fines, you got this, you didn't pay them, and never spoke to nobody. Uh, I got, I did get fined a hundred dollars, yeah. um, and then just I, I, you know, talked to multiple people throughout the city, tried to uh, see what you know what the proper channels were. They they sent me to, um, I think I spoke with, um, I think I spoke with, y yes. Uh, and then it took me about a month and a half to get a land. I had to survey my land. Mm -hmm. I had to get the land survey out. And then I had to. told you to do that, survey your land. Maybe well, they told me to survey, yeah, they told me to survey my land. Um, they said to, you know, I had, to, I had to fast forward to get quick to get into the Patriot Ledger because I, I, would, I can't make the July date. So then I, I had to do that. So it, it's probably been about, I'd say six months, seven, eight months maybe. Did you get here? Yeah. Yeah. It took me it took me probably close to two months to get my land surveyed. Oh, who did? I also I, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't act right away. The second they came out there, I, I called and wanted to know what the yeah. what the fines were and in the proper channels. Fines? I got I, I got one fine. Oh, they say you get well, How would they know? Well, because they talk so much. I'm just, I'm just she, saying what she said. No, no, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. I'm not saying you. I'm not saying you. What I'm saying is they, they, you know, they, they're peeking over the fence every 30 seconds. Of yeah. course, they got to come up and, and make all this stuff up. <laughs> um, now, with that being said, I will say this is they live in a only double lot in the street. Okay. They, they have two lots. Their, their second lot is in between their house and my, my house. Mm -hmm. It's a full lot, mm -hmm. it's a fence. My, their yard goes at a slope. Mine's straight, so my, my my shed even drops lower than their yard. Right. They have a tree line mm -hmm. with all their trees that hang into my yard, which I know is obviously my yeah. dealings. Yeah. But you can't even see that shed. 
I, I've stepped over there, looked from their doorway, and you the can't, you can't even see the shed. Up, up on your deck, in the front, and looking over the side. Okay. It's okay. The only way I can see it. Right. I couldn't see it. I so it's to look through the fence. Right. So it's blocked by a fence. Yeah. It's blocked by the fence. It's blocked by a tree line. I put it. You know, it's tucked away in the corner. Yeah. I mean, they could probably see. Right. I would say six inches of the actual yeah. sidewall, yeah. and then the roof. Yeah. It's a fifteen thousand dollars shed. It's not decrepit. To get the fence to work on it too. I, I completely. I understand that. And, and you do too. I you understand. To to yes. All right. I just wanted to know where to find them. I, I know the story. <laughs> it happens a lot. Yeah. 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 So I did get fined once for a hundred dollars. Yeah. Did you pay it? Did you pay it? Not yet. I was waiting. I was waiting for this to. <laughs> I was waiting for this to go through. <laughs> I didn't get here without paying. <laughs> oh my God! No one paid. I mean, I'm like, I'm like a point. I was told to hold on to it until this goes through, and then we would deal with it. See, a lot of people, it's not. They paid the hundred dollar fine, and, then, and that's not even nothing. About. Nothing's Everything. going away with them. We'll, we'll tell you, nothing's going away with them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Uh, yes. We'll call it part of hearing, folks. I, I think we got our answer. You get all our answers. Good. All right. Uh, I'll be voting in favor to move it. Uh, I do want to move. I don't know. Uh, two feet. Two feet. Make it two feet. You want two feet? You get two feet. Okay. Uh, I'm with eight. Well, fair, yeah. right. fair enough. Yeah, I don't have a problem with the way it is. I don't either. I, I really don't, but you do have to work on the fence. I mean, you, you got to have some room to get in there. You can't stand in the trees. You just can't, You couldn't paint that. If you went and saw the way it is, no, I, 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 I mean, you, you, you can't get a roller in there. <laughs> You come along, Paul. You go along, Paul. You can fly me to see him. Yeah, you can probably do it. You can probably do it. You can make it happen. Is your patio? I didn't get to see your side. So here's the only issue that I have. So the patio, it sits on the on the rocks on the patio. For me to move it over, yeah, would have, probably have to be. It probably the way it is would probably have to be built up on the knee, like even like you probably jacked up. Either so you have to put. You probably have to move the feet. Whatever's holding it over. Yeah, everything's going to have to be moved right, over. Slide it over. It can't slide it. So, honestly, if I had to move it two feet, I'd probably take it down and sell it. Not gonna the, why, why, couldn't, why couldn't you move it? I'd, have to, I'd probably have to put you know, in support on these. Yeah. No, right? Yeah. What, what do you get? It's 10 feet, correct? 10 by 16. Yeah. 16 long. 16 long. Yeah. It's 10 feet. Yeah. It's going to slide. Really not hard to do. No. Really not. Is it empty? Yeah, it depends. <laughs> you don't have a car in there. What's that? You couldn't get a car back there. No, no. You couldn't get a rock back there. It's pretty tough to get to. Either. I know what you mean. Uh, you mean to tell me you couldn't move that like two feet? Probably, I can move it. I can move it anyway. Just, no, I'm it's just coming probably right in the middle of my yard, right walking out the door. What I'm saying is, I'm probably, I honestly would probably sell it, take it down. But the size of that yard, uh, or not, that's where to make enough spot to put it. Is it? So, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying that's where yeah. I would do. I would even probably. Uh, well, do you want us to vote on it as it is, as it is, and see how it goes versus the condition of two it's, feet? I mean, well, yeah, I guess my, my, my ask would be more what are the other options. I guess we're going to see that be called off of the two feet or it's, that's it, right? Well, if I can get back in the yard, because I couldn't get in there. Usually I get in people's yards. So I'll fix my and all your lights were there and everything was there. I just can't burn. No, really. It was like, oh, I saw it. Everything's going on. I'm going, people in there. No, I saw home. Huh? My wife works from home. There was two cars there. So, there were two cars there. So yeah. I was home, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was looking at you all the time. Right, let's, let's continue this for a couple of weeks. Let's get back in the yard. I, 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 I saw the shed. That's all I saw. I'm looking over. I had to look over. I couldn't see I couldn't see his patio. I couldn't see nothing back there. You, couldn't, you just can't see. I disguised myself as a turkey. And just walked back there. I didn't want to go in the back. Yeah, I don't know who you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So I had to let him know. But... So, you so Dan, you stated that you were unable to attend the July meeting. Oh, right. You we, can't. We have a, the next meeting is July 9th and July 23rd. Can you do a 23rd? If, if you are, 
Um, I mean, if you can, if you can, we'll move it to August. August. No, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, the reason I moved it up was so I can get things rolling in my backyard. It's just staff stuff. It's over. I figure out where that shit's going. Huh. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll have to do the 20. Because you're not going to be around July 9th, correct? 23rd? Sure. All right. Mm -hmm. My motion is July 23rd. We'll take a look at it. Mm -hmm. People do work for in case CBA 24-4, Daniel Reggianini for variance direct a small patio to accommodate a 10 by 16 foot shed on the premises number 19 Aguam Road, Quincy. Move that the matter be continued to July the 25th, 24. 23rd. 23rd. I'm sorry, 23rd, 23rd. <clears throat> Second. On a motion, stand on all in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed, so move. Thank you. One more, all right? Sister Barber, for a variance and finding to demolish the existing two family home, selectively repairing the existing foundation and erect approximately 3,000 square foot single, single family home on the front of 87 Dodgers throughout. Mr. Cow, you good, are. Good, good evening, Paul. Uh, I'd like to give you a little background information on our proposal for this evening. 87 Dorchester Street is probably one of the oldest homes in Squanum. Uh, at one time it was a country store and an apartment. And then in the 50s, the Dempsey family bought it and converted it to a uh, two family home where Mrs. Dempsey lived and they had an apartment. In my tenure in Squanum, actually it was the sub rectory for uh, Star of the Sea Church, the newer part of the building. Well, the years went by, Mrs. Dempsey passed on and she had two sons. Uh, they did not live on the premises, uh, and they kept the home, and one always had the dream of moving back. So last year, a year ago last spring, they contacted me, and they said they had a problem with a tenant in there. One of the apartments was vacant, and the tenant was operating a business. So it was a lining business where he had trucks, paint. It was just a blight on the neighborhood. So with that, I got involved with Vic and the tenant, um, cleaning out the site, paying all the fines, Paying, going to the portal and paying all the fines in full and uh, cleaned it out, approached all the neighbors in the neighborhood and said, does anybody want this? Approached uh, people on Trevor, I approached people on Dorchester Street because the Dempseys basically, even though they weren't living there, they were very grateful uh, for what the neighborhood had done for their mother. So with that, I unsuspectedly ran into Brian Herons one day and mentioned it to him, a Squanamite, and his brother Chris. So with that, they, they put their minds together. It was never listed. They purchased the property. And I can honestly say in the first time in my 35 year legal career, this is the first time I've ever come in front of this board where I reduced a two family to a one. <laughs> and, you know, having spent, you, you people have spent many nights with me in the heat of summer trying to squeeze units into parcels. And also, I've reduced the asphalt on the site. So uh, Brian and uh, Chris retained Tim Johnson, who we all know, who's done a lot of uh, quality projects in the city. And the goal is basically to uh, retrofit the existing foundation and to uh, build the structure that he'll present tonight. Early this winter, I went down to the city of Quincy uh, with the plan reviewers, showed him our plans and the consensus was we had to go to conservation, which we did a few weeks ago and got their blessing. And then number two, we had to um, come to zoning. In essence, Tim will speak to some of the nuances, but the special permit for the floodplain. I'm, ha I'm happy to report, I've, I monitored the whole site this winter with some of the largest floods and action we've had and nothing dipped into this neighborhood. Anybody that's gone on site can see how still uh, the lawn has been green and beautiful. So tonight we're looking to go two to one. Tim will make a presentation, answer any questions. We notified all the neighbors and uh, with the counselor also, Bill Harris. And we also sent out a pretty uh, detailed letter of what we're gonna do and receive some responses. So I'll turn it over to Tim and before I go, I'd like to thank Ms. Griffin for helping us along in this process. Uh, well, we're basically going for the special term of floodplain. 
Yes. So that's basically it. And we're going from the two to the one, mm -hmm. uh, which. All right, thank you, Chris. Okay, Chairman thank you. Members of the board, uh, here is the dark line showing the existing building programs. So we are keeping the setbacks on three sides as they are, and we are going over in this area right here in the deck. Uh, this little uh, part of the house and then this bay window is what goes beyond the existing building footprint of the uh, two family. So when we go to the building section quickly before I lose this. We got to come off the other side to be uh, off on um, a Trevor. Sorry, let me see. Oh, Lordy, Lordy. It does. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Stop. Okay. So, uh, we are in the floodplain uh, AE. We have a, a flood base elevation of 20.63, which is the Quincy Sewer Dam. The freeboard, which is the uh, number of feet above flood base elevation, it requires one foot. We are at, we are at uh, two feet existing. Uh, first floor plate is two feet above the uh, FEMA, FEMA flood zone AE, uh, FBE of 20.63. So, uh, number one. Number two is the existing uh, basement. We are filling in with inorganic fill uh, to a maximum of a four foot uh, crawl space. Uh, we have our flood vents. Uh, the details are on another page. Uh, we require flood vents for the uh, new crawl space and uh, filling requirements. Uh, the Constitution And mind you, we have uh, Dorchester Street to the front of the house, and then we have the federal seawall across the street that will mm -hmm. deflect any wave action. And lastly, the, the decks are all we're using just uh, isolated footings to minimize any water displacement during mm -hmm. flooding. Uh, we're not uh, creating any more crawl space areas that don't already exist already. Which um, curb cut will you be utilizing for this project? The one off Trevore. Is okay. it Trevore? It's like, yeah, Trevor. Yeah. Trevor. Trevor? Yeah. Yes. They got two, two of them, right? But you, you take them apart when you cover that up, correct? You'll be giving yes. back to the front the Dorchester Street curb cut? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. I think it's a lot better than what's there and it's going to look really nice. Yeah. No, there's a good thought put into this. Uh, you don't want to? No, I, I just got a couple. Okay. Uh, anyone have any questions? I have no questions. Bear? Uh, nope, I think the plans look great. Difference in the height of the building? From the I, uh, currently, 30 to 31. Yeah. 30 to 31. Uh, uh, we don't. We will uh, keep it uh, right in that area of 31 feet plus or minus. All right, thank you. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, is there anyone want to speak in? You can have a seat. Does anyone want to speak in favor? First call, second call, third call, closed. I got a letter here from DBW. I have to read it for the record, please. To Marty Aikens, Chairman, Zoning Board of Appeals from Cheng Sang, Civil Engineer, dated June 4, 24, East 7 Dorchester Street. Case number ZBA 24 28. We have reviewed the submittal 
for the above reference project and our comments are as follows. One, specify how much impervious area will be increased due to the development. Two, provide grading utility plan for review. Three, will there be a will there be any fill or change of grade due to the development? Four, the elevation data used on the elevation certificate should be under one datum. It looks like the property is in a flood zone. Five, upon completion of the project, have built plan showing all utilities and building footprints need to be submitted along with the digital file. An elevation certificate should also be submitted if the property is in the flood zone. Further information is required, please advise. Thank you, call it time again. Is there anyone opposed to run the side that like to speak? First call, second call, third call, close. Uh, I'll be voting and say it's a beautiful house. Yeah, I, I like it as well. Done. A lot of things about it. It's a 3,000 square foot house, so it's not tiny, but 31 square, 31 foot height. It's, it's well done. Get rid of a two family, all for that as well. I'll be in favor. Um, vast improvement over existing conditions. Um, no opposition. I agree. Our motion, please. Is CBA 24-28, Christopher Barber, for variance and finding to demolish the existing two-family home, selectively repair existing foundation and erect an approximately 3,000 square foot single-family home on the premises number 87 Dorchester Street, Quincy, and hereby move that the request for variance and finding be approved. Second. On the motion, stand on all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Congratulations. Hey, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. You want to plan? Motion to adjourn at uh, motion to adjourn yeah. 6 54 p.m. All in favor? Aye. Oh, come on.